Okay, page 19. This one I'll just go through one by one again. Okay, so March 16, P1 to question 34. Three cells of EMS V1, V2, V3 have negligible internal resistance. These cells are connected to three resistors with resistances R1, R2, R3. The current in the circuit is I, which of this equation is correct? So this one, you're just basically trying to make use of sum of EMF equals to sum of PD from Kirchhoff's second law. K2 law, sum of EMF is equals to sum of PD. But notice that your batteries here are not really oriented in the same direction. Okay, you notice that this one has a tendency to push out current this way for V2. V3 has a tendency to push out current in the same direction. V1 has a tendency to push out current in the opposite direction. If when you're trying to sum out the EMF or PD, you tend to read it in a loop. Okay, either you want to read it clockwise or either you want to read it anti-clockwise. So in our case here, I explained to you, if you want to find out your sum of EMF, you always look at the tendency in which your current is being pushed out from your battery. You basically just look at where the positive terminal is. That is where the current is being pushed out from. So in our case, if we say, for example, make the clockwise, the anti-clockwise direction, and I'm going to use the same color. If we make the anti-clockwise direction as our sign convention, my case here would be that V1 is, uh, my case here is that my sum of EMF would be V1 minus V2 minus V3. Because you can see here, this one is trying to go counterclockwise. This one is trying to go clockwise. This one is also trying to go clockwise. So this one will be positive. This will be negative, And then this will be negative. OK? Now, when it comes to your sum of PD, you look at the current flowing through your resistors. So I mentioned to you that time before, your current direction could be indicated in the diagram already. If it isn't indicated in the diagram, you just assume a particular direction. This one, I think I wrote it in the notes before. You know, let me just quickly open it up for you. Where is it? Yeah, oh, this is a okay. case. Yeah, this one I already mentioned to you. Okay, assume a current direction if it's not indicated in the diagram. If it's already indicated in the diagram, just follow it. Okay, so here the question has already indicated to you your current direction. This one I should probably use this color. See, this one is your current direction already indicated. Okay, so same thing here. You look at how the current flows through your resistors in the circuit. You compare it with your sign convention. So in my case, I was flowing through R1 like this, and then it continued flowing. And then in R2, it flows like this. R3 also flows like this. Now you compare it with your sign convention. The current I flowing through R1 has a tendency to go counterclockwise. The current I through R2 and R3 also has a tendency to flow counterclockwise. So this one is positive. This one is positive. This one is positive. So the, in my case, this one will just be I R1 plus I R2 plus I R3. So the remaining expression would be V1 minus V2 minus V3 I times R1 plus R2 plus R3. Okay, your answer is D. Okay, so let me just write this one properly for you, different color. Uh, this one will be counterclockwise positive, counterclockwise positive, and then counterclockwise positive. Okay, so the answer for this is D. Okay, so this one no issues.
you could also try to repeat this same working but with your sign convention reverse when you say that some of emf is equals to some of pd okay you could repeat it with a different sign convention eventually you notice that your answer will tie back to this one okay so it doesn't matter which sign convention you use okay now let's have a look at question 35 all right now three resistors each of resistance r are connected in the network as shown the total resistance between point x and y is eight ohms what is the value of r this one i think should be quite straightforward you just do what you need to do from here do your simplification this one is connected in series so this one will be r this one will be 2r then this is what you're gonna get and then you can also be simplified further oh this one you'll need to simplify further already this one they already say that the total resistance between x and y is 8 ohms so this one if i simplify this one further to become something like this this one is x and this one is one my resistance here is just going to be 1 over r plus 1 over 2r power negative 1 which is in turn equals to 8 la. okay so you try to find this answer out you should get the answer as this one plus 0.5 power negative 1 then after that anyway this one i better just do it properly this one would be 2r 2r time 2r over r will become 2 2r over 2r is just 1 this power negative 1 this is 8 so this one is 3 over sorry now let me just write this properly this one will be 3 over 2r power negative 1 equals to 8 so from here you try to solve this 2r over 3 equals to 8 so 8 times 3 divided by 2 R will be 12 ohms. Okay. Well, let me just check whether I did not do any mistakes here. This is March 16, T12. Wait now, let me just do a quick check for you. This one, the answer should be 12 ohms. Right, the answer is 12 ohms. Okay. So just do what you need to, and then eventually you find the answer as. Of ohms. Okay, so then you move on to question 36. Here they say that in deriving a formula for the combined resistance of three resistors in series, uh, Kirchhoff's laws were used. Okay, three different resistors in series in deriving a formula for the combined resistance of three different resistors in series, Kirchhoff's law were used are used sorry which physics principle are involved in this derivation so here the Kirchhoff's principle that was used was basically the conservation of charge isn't it you are talking about resistors in series so you're talking about for resistance in series, if you recall the derivation in the notes for DC circuits, it was mentioned that if you have three different resistors that are connected in series like this, 
what we will say is that the sum of e, if you apply Kirchhoff's second law onto this circuit here, we know that V is equals to V1 plus V2 plus V3. Okay. But at the same time, you can change the V's to in terms of IR. So it becomes IR equals to IR1 plus IR2 plus IR3. Now, here it was mentioned that because this one was connected in series like this, your current I would be the same for each of these resistors. Okay, from Kirchhoff's first law, since there's only one possible path for the current through the resistors, the current I through all the resistors is the same. Okay, now this one is based on Kirchhoff's first law. Kirchhoff's first law is in turn based on conservation of charge. Okay, you had to make use of Kirchhoff's first law saying that I is equals to I1 equals to I2 equals to I3 equals to I3. This one was in turn based on conservation of charge. So the answer for this would be A. Okay. Which physics principle is involved in this derivation? It is the conservation of charge for K1 law, where I1 equals to I2 equals to I3. I1 equals to I2 equals to I3, okay? B is nothing related. C is nothing related. D is also nothing related. Okay, uh, C specifically, I think I should mention about C also. The potential difference across each resistor is the same. This one would be for K2 law for resistors in parallel, okay? So if anything, if, they, if one of the answer choices eventually you see is uh, something where they say that potential difference across each resistor is the same, this is more for Kirchhoff's second law where the resistors are in parallel, okay? So this one, if in the future you see something like this, you should know it's more for this one, okay? Right, but here it's not applicable because we are having resistors in series. Okay, so that one is okay. Then we move on to the next one. I'll just clear everything up here. Okay, now battery of a car has an internal resistance of 10, uh, 0 0.1 ohm and the EMF for 12 volts. When the battery is connected to a starter motor, the potential difference across the battery terminals is 7 volts. What is the current supply to the starter motor? Okay. So you can actually try to model this as a circuit where you say something like this. You, know. you can just think of it as I have a battery with internal resistance. I connect it to my so-called starter motor, all right? So I know that my internal resistance has a value of 0 0.1 ohm and my EMF is 12 volts originally. So when this battery was connected to a starter motor, which is this one here, they tell you the potential difference across the battery becomes seven volts. So this one here is kind of like your terminal PD. Okay, we went through this quite a fair bit already on the concept of terminal PD. So terminal PD I mentioned to you could be just two things, depending on the context of your question. It will always either be your net PD across your resist, uh, sorry, it will always be either your net PD across your battery or the total PD across your external circuit. Where is it? Let me just find out where is it. Yeah, it's also under the DC circuit nodes. I mentioned to you that terminal PD is either the net PD across your cell after you take into account voltage loss or it's also the PD available to your external circuit after taking into account voltage loss. 
So whatever you have here is actually talking about the terminal PD. One way of easily looking at this right now is to consider this now. Let's just assume that you have a book meter connected right across here. Okay. And they're telling you that this one right now is seven volts. So if this one is seven volts, it's saying to you right now, from this point to this point, my net PD is seven volts. And then across my external resistor, this one is also seven volts. Okay. So it ties back to the two different definitions I mentioned. Net PD across cell and total PD across your external circuit. Okay, so that seven volt is referring to this right now. So the question is asking you, what is the current supply to the starter motor? Okay, so let me write this properly here for you. This one is was going to be seven volts. This one is also going to be seven volts. And this one is seven volts. This one is seven volts. Okay, so why is the current supplied to the starter motor? Then consider this now. Current is coming out of your circuit. Oh, yeah. current is coming out of your circuit. I shouldn't use yellow. Current is coming out of your circuit, it flows like this. Okay, it doesn't flow through your voltmeter. Okay, voltmeter is always assumed to be infinite resistance so that no current flows through it. So, no current flows through your voltmeter. So, it only flows in the path that is shown here. Okay, it flows through this path, this loop here, like this. Now, if I apply Kirchhoff's second law on this one, I could actually find now. I cannot use Kirchhoff's second law straight here because you see, if I try to apply Kirchhoff's second law, where I say that uh, E is equals to V of the starter motor plus V small r, and then I say this one is I, uh, this one is I resistance of starter motor plus I times the internal resistance you will get stuck. You know EMF E, you know the, uh, you want to find the current I, you know the internal resistance, but then you do not know the resistance of the starter motor. So you actually have two unknowns here, the current as well as the resistance of the starter motor. So you are stuck here. So you cannot really use Kirchhoff's second law directly over here, okay? Because if you use it in this form, you will get stuck. So you have to do it another different way. Now it's from this one here that you can do this. Uh, you see, from Kirchhoff's second law, this one is the same thing. We know that E is the voltage of starter motor plus the voltage loss. The voltage of my The terminal PD across my battery. This one I know that E minus VR is voltage of my starter motor. This one will be seven. Wait, wait. What's the current supply to the starter motor? Oh, this one I think I can do this. Uh, I use this one. Uh, EMF E is equals to voltage of my starter motor plus with my internal resistance. What I want to find now is my voltage loss. E is equals, uh, voltage loss is E minus voltage of my starter motor. My EMF, I know it as 12 volts. This one I know. The voltage of my starter motor, I would know this as seven volts. Okay, this one I know it as my seven volts. Because this one here, is my external circuit. Okay, my external circuit is this part here, the starter motor. So I mentioned to you, terminal PD is the total PD available across your external circuit. In your case, your external circuit is just the starter motor. So if you already know that the terminal PD was seven, that one will be the PD across your 
starter motor also. That's why here I can say that it's 7. So here I take it as 12 minus 7 giving me 5 volts. My voltage loss is 5 volts. From here, I can say that current times internal resistance is 5 volts. Since internal resistance is something I know, it will be I times 0 0.1 equals to 5. So I is going to be 5.1. I'm going to get the answer as 50 amps. So my current here through my internal resistance is 50 amps. Okay, it's 50 amps. This is also the same current flowing through my starter motor. Here the question is asking you the current supply through your starter motor because your circuit is series, in series. Current through your internal resistance is also the same as the current through your starter motor. Okay, so although you're doing this for voltage loss for internal resistance, the current is the same with that of the starter motor. Okay, so this one answer is A. So if anything, this one, what I was just say is this now. Terminal PD voltage or starter motor is 7 volts. Or voltage or EMF minus voltage loss is 7 volts. Okay, so this is the conclusion for terminal PD. Okay, so this one is all right. Then we move on to page, uh, sorry, question 34. This one seems like something we have done before, but let's just go through this. Okay, now in circuit shown, X is a variable resistor whose resistance can be changed from 5 ohm to 500 ohms. The EMF of the battery is 12 volts. It has negligible internal resistance. What is the maximum range of the PD across the output? So your output, you can consider this as you connecting a voltmeter here. What is your potential, uh, what is your PD that are possible here? If X you change from between 5 ohms to 500 ohms. So you could have two different things here where you say is this. I'll just draw out the circuit very quickly for you. The first case you can consider is this. Where this is 12 volts, this is 40 ohms, this one is 5 ohms. And then you connect your voltmeter here. So this is the first case. Let's just say that this one is V1. Okay, maybe I don't write anything here. The second case is similar where you say that this one is 12 volts, 40 ohms, but this time this one is 500 ohms. And then you connect a voltmeter here. So for both cases, you can actually just use potential divider equation here because you see when current flows, it looks like this, okay? It's the same current flowing through both the resistors. I mean, if you look at the diagram individually, for the left side, the 40 ohm and 5 ohm have the same current, so potential divider equation applies. For the right side diagram, for the 40 ohm and the 500 ohms, the same current still flows through, so potential divider equation also applies, okay? So in my case, I can just say that V1 is 5 over 5 plus 40 times with 12. This one will be 5 over 45 times with 12. This one will give me 1.3 volts. Another one could be 500 over 500 plus 40 times 12. giving me 11.1 volts. So my range is 1.3 to 11.1 volts. Okay, for this one, just use potential divider equation. 
Hang on, let me just rewrite this. Okay, so this one use potential divider equation. And the one should be fine. Okay, so this one is all right. Then we we'll move on to another question. If it's okay, this one 35, we've already done it before. Okay, 35, I remember doing this with you before. Okay, we just do 36, then after that we take a short break. Okay, right, now for 36, two resistors of resistances R1 and R2 are connected in parallel. What is the combined resistance between X and Y? Okay, this one, I think this one should be very straightforward, where you just say that, oh, this one is the two resistors. The resistance between X and Y is actually the resistance of the parallel combination, which is actually just going to be 1 over R1 plus 1 over R2 power negative 1. Okay. By right, usually the form is this now. 1 over R1 plus 1 over R2. But this one, if I just make R parallel the subject, this will become our negative one. Okay, it's something to do with your maths. It's something that you would have learned to, to do for maths, okay? Sometimes you will notice that I just tend to use this, then got power negative one. It's because I'm just trying to make this the subject itself. Okay, so this is what you have. So in my case, Rxy would actually be you know, let me just write this in red. Rxy is R1, R2, then this one will be R2 plus R1, R negative one. So this one will be the same as you saying R2 plus R1, R1, R2, okay. then giving you R1, R2 over R1 plus R2. Answer is C. Okay. Right. So this one is math, more, more on your math skill. Right. So question 36 answer is C. Okay. Right. The next one will be 37. The question says this. A voltmeter is used to monitor the operation of an electric motor. The motor speed is controlled by a variable resistor. A fixed resistor is used to limit the speed. The current in the motor is gradually changed. In which of the circuit shown here is the voltmeter reading proportional to the current in the motor? Okay, so this is actually what is the this one is actually some sort of analysis question. The most important thing here is this. They want this requirement. The voltmeter reading must be proportional to the current in the motor. Okay, so this question can get really, really complicated and it can also get really, really simple to analyze. There was an analysis that I did before on the right hand side here. This one was the complicated one. This is really, really tedious. But in your actual P1 later on, you don't that. You don't have that kind of luxury in time to do this kind of analysis. There's actually a much easier method of doing this. That one is on the left hand side here. Okay, so let's just look at what the question wants. Just now the question says this you are actually changing, you just need to know two things. The first thing was that they told you that the current in the motor is gradually changed. This is number one. And then after that, they want you to pick the circuit whose voltmeter reading is proportional to the current in the motor. This is number two. Now, if you look at your uh, circuit that is shown here, your motor is this one, okay? This is your motor. 
the circle with the M inside. This is your motor. So whatever current is flowing through your motor will just be flowing in series. If you look at your circuit right now, this is your current flow, the path for your current flow. It's always in series. There is no junction for your current to speed up at all. Okay, there's no parallel connection. There's no other path for your current to speed. Okay, whatever current is in your motor will be the same current in all of your components. So if that I tell you that this one is current I, it will be current I throughout over here. Okay, so it will basically be the same. There's no current splitting whatsoever. Okay, so that's one thing to note for here. So the requirement is that you want your voltmeter reading to be proportional to current in the motor. This basically means this. You want V is equal, you want V to be proportional to I. Yeah, let me just rewrite this. The voltmeter reading being proportional to the current, it actually means this. V is proportional to I. From here, what it means that is that if I increases, V must increase. If I decreases, V must decrease. Okay. But there's one thing that you can actually take a step back and look at first. In order for V to be proportional to I, something must be constant in the first place. You see, in general, I can say that whatever voltmeter reading that I have is going to be given by the current multiplied by the resistance. So in my case, if I look at the voltmeter right now, this is voltmeter, this is the resistance over which is, uh, the PD is being measured. This is the voltmeter is trying to measure the PD across this resistor. This is the voltmeter is trying to measure the volt the resistance. You know, let me just rephrase what I just mentioned. Your voltmeter here is measuring the PD across these two resistors for A. This voltmeter is measuring the PD across this fixed resistor. This voltmeter is measuring the PD across this variable resistor. And then this voltmeter is actually not measuring the PD across any of your resistors. It's measuring the PD of your supply. Okay, so you just look at the voltmeter itself. Now, if you want V to be proportional to I, if you look at equation V is equals to IR, V can only be proportional to I only when the R is a fixed value, when the resistance value is a fixed value. Okay, so with this in mind, it will actually tell you that A and C are incorrect because the resistance can vary. Okay. It, what do I mean by that is that you look at uh, answer choice A, you look at answer choice A first. The voltmeter is measuring the PD across resistance R and RV. But would the resistance actually be the same here? Is it fixed when I go and change the current in the motor? You see, my case here is that I have a fixed... I'm sorry. In my case here, I have a variable resistor. This one is not fixed. The resistance is not fixed. So this one, my R total, is also not fixed. So if my R total is not fixed, I cannot say that V is proportional to I. Okay, so this one V proportional to I cannot be possible. All right. But then if I look at part B, the voltmeter is measuring the PD across a fixed resistor. So this one is fixed. The resistance is fixed. So I can say that V is proportional to I here. This one is correct. Okay. Then if I look at part C, this one, you see, this one is your variable resistor, right? So this one, again, is not fixed. 
So I cannot say that V is proportional to I. V can only be proportional to I if the resistance value is constant throughout. So A is out, C is out. And then B seems to be the correct answer here because the PD that is being measured is for fixed resistance. The resistance is fixed. So this would mean that whatever value or voltage that I measure will actually just be directly proportional to the current. So if my current, just now I mentioned to you, your current flowing through your motor will also be the current flowing through the other components. It will also be the same current flowing through your fixed resistor. So in my case, if I increase here, that would mean that I increase here, the V will increase. If I suddenly drops, the I here will also drop. So the voltage here will also drop. Okay, so answer should be B. Now D, the last answer is definitely out. Because you see, it's not the, the PD that is measuring is the voltage supply itself. So supply voltage is fixed, you know. Here, the supply voltage is fixed. Therefore, voltmeter reading remains fixed. Okay, so this one has nothing to do with V being proportional to I. Okay, this one, you cannot apply V equals to IR here because supply does not have resistance. Okay, so this one also out. Okay, so the only possible answer is B. Okay, so this is by far the easiest way to look at this question. You just need to identify first that V must be proportional to I here. The only way that V can be proportional to I is, is if the resistance whose PD is being measured remains fixed. Okay, so answer is B, no? Okay. A long-winded explanation of this skip it is not worth it to go away. It will probably take 15 minutes to explain. So just follow the ones that I wrote on the left. It should make your life a lot simpler. Okay, so this one is okay. Then after that, I move on to the next one. Okay, uh, 37 is done. Then I'll move on to the next page. This one, I think I mentioned, I, uh, if you look at page 23, question 36, I believe I've explained this before. So this one I'll skip. 37, 37, I think also is something that I probably would have done, but this one we can just do really, really quickly now, right? Uh, page 23, question 36, I've done it before. 37, I don't think I've done it. So in the circuit shown, contact may be made at any point along the 3 ohm resistor, which is actually your potential meter here. So your battery is an EMF for 9 volts and negligible internal resistance. What's the maximum range of your output voltage? So in my case, what I want to do is this. I know that my 3 ohm here acts like a potential meter. The arrow can be shifted to either here or either here, okay? So the question wants the maximum range of your output voltage. So you will actually try to find out what is the voltage at point A and point B. That one will give you your range. Hey, sorry. You find out the volt uh you find out the output voltage when your potential meter is position A and B, that one will give you your range. If you put it at position A, this one is your first range. If you put it at position B, this one is your second range. Okay, so same thing as before, you just do it really, really quickly by drawing a simple diagram. So here I can just draw it like this. Let me say it as 2 ohm, 3 ohm, 4 ohm. So if it's position A,
my root meter is kind of like connected like this just right before the 3 ohm okay it will be something like this this one i know is 2 ohm this one is 3 ohm this one is 4 ohm this one is 9 4 so i apply potential meter equation this one will be 2 over 2 plus 3 plus 4 times 9 giving you 2 volts if i'm not mistaken yeah this one will give you 2 volts okay then after that the next part will be you connecting it at position b So same thing, just quickly just draw the circuit. This one will be something like this. When we tell you that this one is 2 ohm, 3 ohm, 4 ohm. At position B, your voltmeter is connected to... If at position B, it's the same as you connecting to right after your 3 ohm. If at position A just now, is akin to you connecting to right before your 3 ohm. Okay, so now back to the position B here. Your voltage is actually just going to be 3 over 2 plus 3 plus 4 times with 9. This one is 9 volts, giving you 3 volts. Okay, so your range is 2 to 3 volts. The answer is C. Okay, so yeah, my mistake. Let me just withdraw that one. At position A, this one was the one that I had, 2 ohm, 3 ohm, and then 4 ohms. And then at position A, just now this one was position A, and then this one was position B. At position A, that one was just similar to you connecting to right before your resistor. So this one is 2 over 2 plus 3 times plus 4 times 9, giving me 2 ohm. And then after that, for the position B, this one was something like this, where it says 2 ohm, it's 3 ohm, and then it's 4 ohm. This is 9 volts, this is 9 volts. In my case, my voltmeter is connected to right after the 3 ohm resistor. Okay, at position B. This one is at position B. Okay, so in my case, yeah, my mistake. Yeah, Auntie, you're right. I should be adding the 2 ohms, not 3 ohms. Okay, so just now I wrote here 3 ohms, right? That one. I forgot to include the 2 ohms here. It should be 3 plus 2 over 2 plus 3 plus 4 times with 9. So this one here would be actually 5 volts. So the range is actually 2 to 5 volts. Just now I told you the answer is C, right? This is wrong. D is the correct one. Okay, answer is D. Okay, my mistake. Okay, then after that, you move on to the next page. Okay, you move on to the next page. This one will be page 24. Okay, now, this one here is saying to you that a circuit contains a cell, two resistors of resistances R1 and R2 and a variable resistor X. The cell has negligible internal resistance. V1 is the PD across resistance of R1. I2 is the current through resistance of R2. The resistance of X is reduced. What will be the effect on V1 and I2? Okay. So this one here, you can actually just think of it this way. Remember that this one is a parallel connection. So I, I mentioned to you guys before that resistance of parallel resistance is always smaller than the smallest resistance in the combination. Okay. 
So right now, what the question has mentioned to you is that resistance of X is reduced. Resistance of X is actually in your parallel combination. So what I can say here is that if Rx decreases, R parallel reduces even more. Okay. So your they didn't really tell you how much did they reduce the resistance x, but you can actually just think of it as they're reducing it as slow as possible. So if they're trying to reduce the resistance as slow as possible, I know that resistance in parallel will always be smaller than the smallest resistance in my combination. If Ry, sorry, if Rx is already smaller than R2, my R parallel obviously would be smaller than Rx. So if Rx drops, R parallel would drop also, okay? So that is the basis of the understanding here, okay? So my resistance Rx drops, my resistance in parallel drops. Now, when my resistance in parallel drop, my total circuit resistance will drop. Okay, the total circuit resistance drops. If I drop, resistance in parallel reduces even more, my total resistance drop. This one, if I wanted to do it this, I can actually write it as this. I mean, I can actually draw another equivalent circuit, but I tell you is this. This one is basically R1, where you have V1 here. And then this one is your parallel resistance now, okay? This one is your parallel resistance. This is your RP, okay? This is your R parallel. So right now, if my resistance in parallel drops, my total resistance, which was composed of R1 and R parallel, obviously, sorry, let me just write this. My R total is actually composed of my resistance in parallel plus R1. So if my resistance in parallel drop, obviously R total will drop low. R1 is fixed. You didn't change anything to R1, okay? So Total resistance drop. Now, as a result of total resistance dropping, I total would increase. No? Okay. So, if total resistance drop, total current increases. This is one thing to note first. Now, when I total increases, let's just say right now that this one is my I total right now. Okay. So, I see this as my I total. Now, if my I total increases, what I can say now is that my I total flowing through R1 increases. So you can just see from here for R1, V1 is actually I total times with R1. Okay, it's actually I total times with R1. So R1 itself is fixed. You never change anything here. So if the I total increase, V1 obviously will increase. No? So I total increase, V1 would increase. Okay. V1 would increase. So for your answer, once they found V1, you know it should increase. But what about the effect on I2 now? That's the other thing that you want to find out. Okay, so to find out I2, well, one of the things that you can do, you can actually do this from Kachot second law, where we tell you this one. Now you apply Kachot second law for this thing here. You can say this one, you can say this where you say that uh, EMF is actually the same as V1 plus the voltage across your parallel combination, okay? Now, this one, EMF is fixed, 
maybe I draw it at the bottom, sorry. I know that the EMF value is fixed. You did not change the battery. This one is fixed, okay? But V1, you already established that it's increasing. So if this one was fixed, EMF is fixed, but V1 is increasing, that means the voltage for my parallel combination must be dropping, okay? So this one, I can say that E is fixed, V1 increase, therefore V parallel drops. Now, because V parallel is dropping, I also know that V2 will drop. Okay, V parallel drops, V2 drops. Because one of the things I also mentioned to you for parallel combinations was this, under your TC circuits. This one also was covered in the notes before. I mentioned to you that if you have parallel combinations, the equivalent PD, if let's say you simplify a parallel combination into an equivalent resistance, the PD across that equivalent resistance will be the PD across each of the resistance, or rather it will be the same as the PD across each of the path, okay? So here I told you that if you have R1 and R2 connected in parallel, it simplifies to RP, and then you manage to find out the PD across RP, that PD will be the PD across R1 and R2, okay? It's something similar over here right now, okay? So my case here is that I managed to find out that uh, V1 is dropping, the voltage in parallel would actually drop. When voltage in parallel drops, that means V2 will also drop right here, okay? So when V2 drops, you can now then apply the equation for V equals to IR again. This one, I can now say this. For R2, I know that R2 is going to be V2, I2, R2. R2 again is fixed. It's a fixed resistor. This one is fixed, okay? So V2 is now dropping. I2 must therefore drop. Lo. I mean, from here, I know this relation lo, because R2 is fixed, you see. R is fixed. V is proportional to I. So I, so, sorry, V is proportional to I. If V drops, I also drops. Okay? This one is one way of looking at it. But I can actually just see from the equation here straight away. Lo. This one is fixed. If V1, uh, V2 drops, I2 must also drop. No? Okay? So, this one should be the answer. Answer is C. Okay? Yeah, this one actually turned out to be quite complicated. <laughs> yeah, answer is C. No? All right? The ones that I had in my work solution did, didn't really make as much sense. This one is the one that makes much sense right now. So answer is C, okay? Okay, now let's have a look at page 26 of the question. Now you have a battery of EM, uh, EMF 9 volts and an internal resistance of 0 0.25 ohms that is connected in series with two identical resistors X and Y as shown in figure 7.1. The resistance of each resistor X is 0 0.15 ohm and the resistance of resistor Y is 2.7 ohm. Show that the current in the circuit is 2.8 ohms. This one I think should be pretty straightforward. This is your series circuit. So you can straight away apply Kirchhoff's second law without any problems here, where you basically just say this now. Uh, sum of EMF equals sum of PD. E is equals to VX plus VY plus VX plus V small r. Okay, you have these sources of PD. Okay, and because they are connected in series, you're gonna have the same current of i throughout. So this one can be just re-expressed as i, rx plus ry plus rx plus with r. 
Now you know everything here. This one is 9. This i is 0 0.15 plus 2.7 plus 0 0.15 plus 0 0.25. By right, you should be getting 2.8 amps. But let me just quickly do this. Divide by this. Yeah, you're going to get by right the answer is 2.77 ohms. Okay, it's 2.77 ampere, sorry. You run it up to 2 SF, it's 2.8 amps. Okay, so that one is okay. And then after that, for part two, calculate the potential difference across the battery. Potential difference across the battery is your terminal PD. Okay, so Calculate the potential difference across your battery. It's basically asking you to calculate this. It is actually asking you to calculate your terminal PD. So in my case, I can actually just say that the PD is E minus voltage loss. It's going to be E minus I times R. In my case, is going to be 9.0 minus with 2.8 times with 0 0.25. Okay, 0 0.8 times 0 0.25, 9. 0.25 times 2.8. So it's 9 minus the answer. You're going to get the answer as 8 volts. Okay, so this one is talking about your terminal PD and something similar. Okay, so this one is all right. Then after that, for 36 in the next page, in a circuit shown, okay, in the circuit shown, the reading on the emitter is zero. The four resistors have different resistances, R1, R2, R3, and R4. Which equation here is correct based on what we see here? Okay, so this one is kind of like your potential meter. Okay, so this one, if you had voltage V over here, you will also have the same voltage V here and same voltage V here. Okay, this one will be V, this one will be V. Okay, but of interest to you is the fact that they told you that this one, your emitter reading is zero. So it has something to do with your potential meter that you learn. This one, I can say that, no, this one, the arrow is too big. This one, I can basically say this, V2 is the same as V4. And then similarly, I can say that V1 is the same as V3. This is what I can say. Now, when it comes to the current that is flowing through your circuit, this one, you can essentially see something like this happening. Uh, what color can I use? I'll use purple. Okay, I'll use this color. If I had current I coming out, from the battery, the moment it reaches this junction, it will split up. So right now I could have current I2. Okay, now maybe I2, I3, I1, I2 is a bit confusing. I could have current IA and then I could have current IB. So current IA will be flowing through R1 and R2. Current IB will be flowing through R3 and R4, okay? So in my case, IA would not be the same as IB. It can be the same if, our, if the resistances here are the same, but we do, just do not know that. So we can, we, we, most, uh, IA can be the same as IB under the condition that R1, R2 is the same as R3, R4. But here we do not know, so we can't say that. So for to make things simple, we just assume that IA is not the same as IB, okay? 
It can be the same, it can be different, but that's not what the, we want to do right now. The of interest to us is that IA is flowing through R1, R2, IB is flowing through R3, R4. We can actually apply potential divider equation for each of these paths. Okay, so this one I know potential divider equation applies. Okay. So some of the relation I know from that is this V2 is the same as V4. V1 is the same as V3. Okay, this one were the two relations that I know. So if I try to apply the potential divider equation, V2 would be basically R2 over R1 plus R2 times V equals to R4 over R3 plus R4 times V. So the V will cancel all eventually giving me R2, R3 plus R4. So R4, R1 plus R2. Okay, so this is what I have right now. Okay, so from here, I can also do one for the thing. This is just what I have. Uh, R3, R4, this one doesn't cancel off yet, but let's just see for V1 and V3, whether do we get something from there. V1 would be R1 over R1 plus R2 times V. V3 would be R3 over R3 plus R4 times V. So same thing as before, V cancel off. So I'm gonna get R1, R3 times R, R plus R4, R3, R1 plus R2. So this one is basically R1, R3 plus R1, R4, R1, R3 plus R2, R3. Now this one will cancel off. R1, R3 will cancel off. Eventually giving you R1, R4 equals to R2, R3. So answer would be D, okay? If I use V2 equals to V4, I can't get any of the answers out from what I can see here, okay? R1, R2 is over R1 plus R2 times V, R4 is R3, R4, okay. So R2, R3 plus R4, R4 is R1 times R2. If I try to expand it out, this one, I can't see anything that we can solve. This one is R2, R3 plus R2, R4 equals to R1, R4 plus R2, R4. I, actually, I can cancel off this one. Sorry, I can cancel off this one. This one, let me just rewrite this. R2, R4, R1, R4 plus R2, R4. This one cancels off. So eventually I'll get R2, R3 equals to R1, R4 which also ties back to this one, okay? So no matter which one you do, it will tie back, okay? So that one is for question 36. So far, so good. All right, so this one is okay. Doesn't matter which one, okay? You can just use V2 equals to V4 or V1 equals to V3, all right? So that one is okay. Okay, then we move on to 37. Let me just clear off everything here. Okay, the diagram shows to you current I1, I2, I3, I4, and I5 in different branches of a circuit. Which of these equation is correct? This one I think shouldn't be that big of an issue. I think maybe we've done this also already. This one is my junction. This one is current in. This one is current out. This one is current out. So I1 is I2 plus I3. And then after that, 
I can also see that this one is my junction. This one is current in. This one is current in. This one is current out. So I3 plus I4 equals to I5. But just first law is where we say that sum of current in is equals to sum of current out. So for any specific junction, just identify the current that is going in and the current that is going out. From there, you should be able to see which, from there you should be able to form your Kirchhoff's first law. So from here, the equation that is correct is A, only this one seems to be inside your answer choices, okay? So the rest doesn't seem to be inside. Yeah, so none of that. This one here is not in the answer choice, not in answer. Okay, this one could also be correct, but it's not inside the answer choice. Okay, so 37 is done. 37 answer is A. Then after that, we go to this one. Okay, uh, next page, question, uh, page 28, question 37. In the circuit shown, there is a current of 3 amps in the 2 ohm resistor. Okay, what are the values of current I delivered by the power supply and the voltage V across it? Right, so 3 amps across the 2 ohm. What are the values of current delivered by the power supply and the voltage across it. Okay, so this one, we want the current I and we have, we want the voltage V. Okay. So from here, this one, you can just do something like this. Now, if you look at this question and look at this diagram, we know the if you look at the 2 ohm resistor, we know the current, we know the resistance, okay? So here I can actually say something like this. This one is something where you kind of like need to work step by step. For the 2 ohm resistor, the voltage is actually IR. In my case, it will be three times two, giving me six volts. Okay, so here I know I have six volts. But then after that, you notice that this one is a parallel connection. Okay, so what you notice is that this one is a parallel connection. So if I know that the top one is six volts, it also follows that the bottom one would also be six volts. Okay, so here would also be six volts, okay? So I can actually say that for the six ohm resistor, the V is actually six volt because of the parallel connection. I know V is six volts because of the parallel connection, but now I want to find out the current through the six volts. So if I use V is equals to IR, is six, is I times resistance of six ohms, my I is actually 1.0 amps, okay? So here I know I have a current of 1.0 amp. So this part here being my junction, I will split up to 3 amps and 1 amp. So here I can actually make a conclusion then that from K1 law, from K1 law, I is actually just going to be 3 plus 1, giving me 4.0 ampere. Okay, so this is one part settled. Now, so that current I, it will flow through 
this part, it will also eventually flow through this part going back. If you look at the diagram carefully, so I know that this one would be I, this one would be the same I flowing through. This one will have a current of four amps through 1.5 ohms. So here I am interested in finding out the PD across this. This one I'm interested in finding out the voltage. So here I would say something like this. For the 1.5 ohm resistor, one point five ohm resistor use V equals to IR again. I know the current is four, I know the resistor is one point five. Eventually this one will work out to become six volts. Okay, so this one is going to be six volts for me. This one is six volts. Okay, then the last one. They want the volt across my power supply right this one you can just apply Kirchhoff's second law okay so this one let me just use a different color what color have I not used I haven't used pink okay so this one from k2 law if I apply k2 law for this loop itself I can say that v is actually going to be six volts plus six volts giving me 12. Six plus six giving me 12 volts. So our answer is going to be C. I is four amps, V is 12 volts. Okay, right? Yeah, so this question has quite a fair bit of steps to do. Alright, but it kind of combines everything you've learned in DC circuits now.